One of your next guests says tech could be up roughly 20% this time next year. Let's bring in to discuss Dan Ives, Managing Director of Equity Research at Wedbush, and Gene Munster, Managing Partner at Loop Ventures. Dan, I'll start with you because you're on set. Good to see you, by the way. And you're wearing a blue coat. It's perfect. If I had said to you, IBM was going to be the best performing technology stock this year, you probably would have asked me what was in my coffee besides cream. Are you surprised by just overall how the whole year has played out? Yeah, it's been a horror show. I mean, it's really been a nightmare on Elm Street. shows a little light. A little soft? I mean, take, take your worst horror show and just keep watching. Because really, for tech investors, I mean, it's the perfect storm. Because ultimately, what you've seen with the Fed and risk-off assets, and you've seen multiples compressed across the board, and now sort of the next leg is a softening in terms of the demand picture globally. And I, look, what I would say is that I do believe that right now tech stocks are baking in a lot of bad news. And my view, you know, just doing this for decades, I feel like it has overshot now we ultimately need to see the decks cleared on numbers for 2023 yeah. and have some sort of what I believe, you know, in terms of fundamentals and sentiment, start to at least rebound in terms of what we're seeing going to next year. Gene, if we were sitting around having a beer and you said to me, OK, a 4 percent interest rate hike is going to it's going to hurt housing. I'd say, OK, it's going to hurt the auto market. I'd say, yeah, I get it. People borrow a lot of money for cars. And if you said it's going to bring down Apple or Amazon by 40 percent. I would have pushed back. Why are these technology stocks suddenly so beholden to interest rates? It's uh, just the market momentum, the market psychology. I think uh, Dan appropriately talked about it, overshooting, but that is the piece that is hard to predict. That doesn't get into some sort of business school model, and that's why I think a lot of people, including myself, have missed this uh, that kind of the scope of the downturn. This predicting this market is part fundamentals, part uh, first uh, operations of what's happening with interest rates. There's derivative effects, uh, obviously, with what's happening with China and the reopening. But at the, the third piece, too, is this psychological piece, which brings up the question uh, of when is this downtrend going to end, especially with tech. This negative momentum, this recent uh, downdraft with Apple, I think, really spooks people across the board. Uh, yeah. I agree with the thought. We just need a flush out. We need this moment where everybody says this is really bad. And that's probably where the bottom starts. Do forming. you think that's coming that there is some I mean, haven't we had the flush? Well, we have it. I mean, it, it can get really bad. And I think when it comes to the guidance for the mm. March quarter, I think more broadly across big tech. Uh, it's going to be the, the word that we've been using is messy. And what that means is there's probably going to be some downward revisions. I'm reluctant because we're not macro uh, investors here. I'm reluctant to uh, do the call the bottom here. But my sense is I have a strong sense that we're going to end 2023. The Nasdaq is going to be higher than it is at the beginning of the year. So I feel good about that. What the, the, the timing of that bottom is, I think if you're going to ask me, I just need to guess what's that best timing. I think it's probably post this earnings. Uh, and uh, I think the best thing that can happen to the market is because there's this psychological game that's playing. I think the best thing is that these companies can try to put some sort of rails around it mm -hmm. and give some negative guidance. Yeah. And look, I mean, my view, I think a lot of what Gene hits on is, is super accurate. I ultimately believe right now it's as under owned as I've seen tech going back to 2009. And, and I think ultimately, what does that mean? Under owned? What that means, institutionally speaking, tech investors that I've talked to, you know, going back to dot com bubble and burst, basically own as little tech as I've seen. And really, from a sentiment perspective, it's as bad going back to the days of 2009. But what the heck happened? It, it was over owned last year. I could have gotten people on this show, but well, Brian, it's over owned 12 months ago. Now it's under own. Well, I think ultimately, if you look at what the Fed's done with the foot on the pedal in terms of what's happened with rates, you've basically seen, as Gene talked about, a risk off that, that I would really call a tidal wave risk off market. But ultimately, when I look at names like Apple, I look at names like Amazon, you look at names like Microsoft in terms of cloud, I think we sit here a year from now, tech stocks are yeah. up 20%. Yep. And, th and that's why we don't feel that now's the time to throw in the towel. You know, Gene, the first time I got on TV doing this, I, first off, I was horrible. Some would say I still am. But it was 1998. The market promptly collapsed two years later. Then 2007 rolls around. The market promptly collapsed from 2008 to 2009. And in each of those times, and I'm trying, there's a reason I'm bringing this up, is to be a little more optimistic heading into the new year. In each of those times, it was grim. 
I mean, people are calling for disaster. And by the way, companies went out of business, hedge funds blew up, and people got crushed, not minimizing it. But if you had put money into some of these big stocks back then, twice, I'm not saying you'd be rich now, but you'd be up. Is this that kind of opportunity longer term again? I think it is. And when I say longer term, I think in the 2024. And I'll just emphasize this piece. We've had this 48 percent down with Fang this year. Most of that is because of multiple compression on the psychology of the market. Some of it in the case of Meta, for example, earnings have come down. But I think that the key here is that the fundamentals of these businesses remain solid. And ultimately, these are generational companies. And so I think uh, it is not invest in uh, tech more broadly and you're going to do well over the next two years. I think you have to pick your spots. And I think that this is one of those opportunities. Again, I don't think we're at the bottom. I'm not trying to be cute, but I, I, I think we're going to have an mm-hmm. op- opportunity. Our fund is 50 percent in cash. If we thought we we're at the bottom, we'd be deploying today. We're waiting for that uh, messy. You are waiting. We're waiting for the messy quarter. But I think you, to your question is, you know, this is where we're, we want to optimize our performance. So that's why we're waiting. But I think if you have that view of, of uh, six, 12 months out, I would just point one other piece out there. It's really hard to be positive on tech right now. And you feel like you're missing something. You feel like you're not getting the joke. And uh, I, every, well, every dip you've bought into this year, you've gotten your face ripped off. Correct. And you just don't, it's hard to uh, predict the bottom yeah. on it. And so you just don't want to do that. I'm kind of doing the math here real time, Dan. I've never had the conversation with you, but I'm guessing we probably hit the ground running about the same, uh, probably all three of us. And yeah. I started in the business in kind of the mid 90s. Uh, but uh, my, this does feel, this does have that same feel as those periods that you. That, that late 2000, before. early 01, late 08 feel. It, well, I mean, at least to me, yeah. but that's just, maybe we still have shell shock from that time. Well, give us an opportunity. Dan, we got to go quickly, but tell us what to buy. Well, I mean, I, I would be, in terms of my favorites, Apple continues to be our favorite here in terms of the demand store that I believe holds up. Microsoft continues to be the core way to play the cloud. And I think Palo Alto, in terms of cybersecurity, is a table pounder. Right now, New York City cab drivers bearish on tech. We believe now is ultimately not the time to, to, to really get nervous. I think it's sort of steady. Hands and we believe techs up significantly into this next year. Okay.